What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the locker room. Justin, what's going on, brother? What's up, guys? How are we all doing? Hey, listen, we got a fun episode for you. And the reason we love doing this show on a Monday is because there's so many headlines that happen over the weekend that happen during the week. And so that way, Monday, we record. Tuesday, it's out to you. And we're going to start with uh, a kind of a non-sports uh, topic here, but I guess it does involve sports. Will Smith did it, did win an Oscar for his performance. I don't remember the movie's name, but it's he was portraying it Serena. Was King Arthur. King Arthur, yep. that's right. Serena and Venus Williams' dad. So it does how, involve how sports. How do I even know that guy? Yeah. It does involve sports, uh, but basically, this is probably the most trending topic in the world right now. So, short story, if you don't know what happened, or if you haven't seen the video, um, we'll attach it in a, in a little highlight video for the podcast family out there. Follow TLR Podcast 615 on social media so you can see that video. Um, but basically, Chris Rock made a G.I. Jane joke. And he made it about Will Smith's wife, and here's the deal. Will Smith's wife has alopecia, which means that, you know, they you, you don't grow hair and you lose hair. So she's, she's bald, has short hair because of her alopecia. Okay, um, so he makes the G.I. Jane joke because of the hair. So Will Smith goes from laughing, turns around, sees his wife, Jada, not laughing. Then he goes up on stage. Most people, including me, thought that this was a staged moment. He was going to go up there and make a joke or maybe a fake slap or, you know, it was going to be something funny and that it was all written in to make the Oscars more exciting. Well, it did get more exciting because Will Smith smacked the shit, and I mean smacked the shit out of Chris Rock. Chris Rock stood there stunned, didn't know what to say, didn't know how to react. The audience went dead silent, and Chris Rock's looking around like, did this really just happen right now? And so Will Smith then goes back to the audience, um, and the, the audience is still trying to figure out how to react. Like, is this real? Is there a punchline to this? And he goes, keep my fucking wife's name out your mouth. He screams that repeatedly, and... Next thing you know, we have probably the greatest 35 seconds in Oscars history. Can we just be honest? Will Smith's a little bitch for that. Oh, my goodness. Really slapping like a little girl? Come on, man. Well, here's the deal. And here, here's... Big bro man just go straight to fuck you and hit him in the face <laughs> in their face. What, that's what I'm saying. Like, if we're going to throw, we're going to throw. Damn. And, like, and Shannon, he's so sensitive, man. And like, just a joke, homie. Shannon, Shannon Sharp said the same thing. Shannon Sharp was like, yo, if we going to fight, we going to fight. We're not going to smack each other. We're not going to smack and then walk away. Like, we going to throw down. Hell no, you smack me, I'm going to lay your ass out there. I'm going to literally beat you to a pulp on stage right there. I don't give a fuck. Like, here's the deal. I was proud of how Chris Rock handled it because he, he did the mature adult thing as opposed to throwing down. Talk about cool under pressure, man. That's yeah. just like trying to hit the game-winning shot right there or a quarterback in the fourth quarter trying to... And Chris Rock went straight, just, he's like, Will Smith just smacked this living shit out of me. But then he kept going, and he, and he, uh, yeah, he joked around with it. But man, cooling the pressure, that dude, that cat was, he, he was the one that came out looking good. Oh, for sure. He got pimp slapped by fucking Will Smith. And he still kept going on. So yeah. By the way, I like how I gave Justin the green light to swear, <laughs> and every word is fuck shit, fuck shit. <laughs> Folks, it's just how I am, right? You gonna know that, right? You gonna know that right now. I have no filter. Oh no, they right? know. They know if they listen to the first twenty-five seconds of this podcast, they already know. But no, no, no. You're right. Like Chris Rock and Dana White even tweeted out. Dana White's like, "Yo, Chris Rock's got a chin on him." Sign him up for a ma- sign him up for a UFC contract right there. He stood dude tall. Can, dude can take. A hit, and if you watch that video, that is a hard hit. You heard it, yeah. Just, you can hear the smack pretty, pretty loud on stage. It was quite shocking, and so here's here's my 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 feelings behind it. Okay, and then I'll let you give your side. So, Chris Rock made a joke. The purpose of people introducing and, and hosting the Oscars and stuff like that is to make fun of the people in the audience so that they don't take themselves too serious. What do you think about John Cena when he made fun of Tom Brady? He made fun of all those other Peyton stars? Peyton Manning, Ricky Gervais. Ricky Come Gervais on. has said ten times worse things than Chris Rock ever did last night. But that's their job. Their sole job is to go out there is to make light of the situation. So it's Hollywood's way of saying we don't take ourselves that seriously even though they do. Let's but- be honest. No one really watched it. And then they that's like the most views they've ever gotten on any oh, of their especially clips especially in the last five years. Um, and so like the biggest thing is that that's what their job is. Chris Rock's job is to go out there and make a joke. I would get Will Smith's anger if Will Smith was if if Will Smith's wife 
had cancer or had some crazy, you know, breast cancer or some, some detrimental illness that was killing her, right? Then you could be like, if he, if he walked out and he was just like, oh, cancer sucks, doesn't it? And he pointed at Will Smith's wife. So you'd be like, oh my, you can't do that. Like, I, I respect a man for smacking somebody because of that. Guys, it's alopecia. And yeah. I'm not saying I, I know people. I don't people. respect no man who slaps somebody. You got to straight up ball your fist up and just hit him square in the fucking face. Okay, no, what I'm saying is, is like, yes, alopecia is is a sickness. And yes, it or is a disease. And yes, it does, you know, it does suck. And, and it does help hurt people with their body image. I get all that. But it's alopecia, guys. He wasn't making fun of cancer. He wasn't making fun of, like, a dead baby. He wasn't making fun of something that's awful. And guess what? Ricky Gervais has said ten times worse things to the people in the room. He made a joke, and he said, uh, he said uh, a lot has changed in Hollywood this year. Not as much as Bruce Jenner. And then he also made a joke about Bruce Jenner not doing a lot for women drivers. Like, that's way worse than making a joke about alopecia. But here's the biggest joke of it all. Will Smith's wife was sleeping with other men in Will Smith's house. She was sleeping with Jada, with, with Jaden's yeah, she's, friends. She's a pretty big bitch. Let's yeah, be she's honest. a horrible human being, so it's okay. So he's going <clears> to <throat> smack Chris Rock for making a joke about alopecia. Not even a very bad joke. And then he's going to let his wife go sleep with whoever she wants, and he's not going to go roll up and smack that guy? Like, I respect Will Smith as he's chasing that guy down. But he doesn't. He doesn't chase that guy down. That guy's okay. And then he goes up and smacks Chris Rock for a dumb little joke, and then he makes a giant ass of himself. And the biggest thing is, like, if that doesn't show you how twisted the view is of Hollywood, I don't know what will. Because they're backing Will Smith for saying how he protected his family and protected his wife. It's like, yo, where was this same Will Smith six months ago when she was bragging on a podcast about sleeping with multiple men in your bed and in your house? That's my biggest takeaway is like Chris I Rock had be a massive chin anymore after that. Well, that's my thing is like Chris Rock had a massive chin. Congrats to him. But how can you call yourself a man if you don't stand up for people sleeping with your wife in your own house? Well, oh, Will Smith ain't no man. Let's no. be honest. He's a little punk. The memes by the way coming out of this are quite awesome. If you've seen Men in Black, I saw one where he had the the uh, memory eraser stick and it said the Will Smith neuralizer. Sm- yeah, the neuralizer and it said Will Smith need one of these after tonight. <laughs> Man, that was the most, that was, he has to be, like, sorely embarrassed. And then when he won an Oscar, and then he apologized to everybody <laughs> but Chris Rock. Yeah, yeah. He saw all the other women. Oh, my gosh. He's just so, he's just, he's so tolerant. He's just so, uh, you know, sensitive. Well, and here, here's, he's a little yeah. punk women. He's a little bitch. Yeah, and like, here's the he deal. Want, like, you don't want him as your man. They were asking all these other celebrities, like, what did you think? And most of them were like, yo, it's a joke. You've got to learn how to take a joke. And also, like... Nobody now, nobody nowadays can take jokes anymore. But it's, like, it was crazy. He just rocked Will Smith. Or yeah, Will Smith just rocked Chris Rock. And then the world was like, oh, poor Will Smith. And it's like, yo... Like, if I'm Chris Rock, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm jumping in with my homies tonight. But here's the deal. Will Smith, knowing how Will Smith acts now, he probably would have pressed charges. Like, congrats to Rock for not pressing charges because he very well could. Like, the police were there and on site and said, yo, you want to press charges? He's like, nah, I'd be straight. But that, that, that better be his way of saying, like, nah, I'm going to get him back. Like Shannon Sharp said, nah, I'm going to get you back. You ain't going to punk me in live TV. <laughs> Uh, but let's go from that fight to another fight that happened in the streets. So what, me and you? N- I mean, nah. you want to fight? We can. We fought to put guys plenty of times. If you've ever plenty watched, of times, guys. If you've ever watched us play basketball growing up, fists were thrown after every match. Like the way we ended it, it wasn't you know game to twenty one. It was game to twenty, and then fist thrown for the final point. <laughs> <laughs> but Daddy always won, folks. Daddy always won. Let's and just thank, remember that. And thank the Lord my name is Daddy in this conversation. All right. <laughs> so, uh, Colby Covington and Jorge Masvidal squared off in the octagon uh, three weeks ago now. So, the story behind them, quick synopsis for those of you who don't follow the UFC that closely. They were training partners, very close to best friends, lived together. Literally, Colby Covington lived on Jorge Masvidal's wife's couch. Uh, growing up uh, while they were training together and they were friends become enemies so they had a falling out long story short and they hate each other now so the big fight happened three weeks ago where Jorge Masvidal versus Colby Covington friends become rivals Colby Covington worked him the entire match Jorge had one nice punch that rocked him a little bit but other than that uh, 
Colby Covington just worked them all five rounds, won in unanimous decision. One of them could have been an 8-2 round, uh, in my personal opinion. So we go from that, right? Colby Covington works him in the octagon to Jorge Masvidal putting on a mask and a hoodie and jumping Colby Covington in a nightclub. Well, he must have taken lessons from uh, Will Smith over there. Yeah. Be a little bitch. Yeah, 100%. And so Jorge Masvidal, he, he jumps him, uh, uh, and it's a whole ordeal. And so Colby <laughs> Covington presses charges, right? Which... A lot of fighters are like, no, you just should have squared up with him. You guys shouldn't have you guys shouldn't have pressed charges. You should have squared up. Here's the deal. If Jorge Masvidal would have gone face to face with Colby Covington and then they duked it out, I would respect that a hundred percent. But you can't put on a hoodie and a mask and sucker punch somebody and then be like, you know, it's on sight. I'm gonna square up. So, like, do you think that that's an okay thing to do to press charges? No, that makes well, no, Colby Covington did the right thing. Uh so you do think it's okay that he pressed charges? Yeah. Because a lot of people are trashing this man no. for pressing charges. It's like, okay, this wasn't a standard street Jorge's fight. Jorge's a little bitch for that. Like, who just sucker punches? I mean, I say that, and Will Smith did it on live TV. So, yeah. I mean, man, what a little coward. Square up and try to beat Well, you couldn't, beat him, in the be- o- you couldn't beat him in the octagon. That's his problem. It's like, he was butthurt because he Jorge got Because Jorge sucks. Jorge's terrible. Jorge is the most overrated superstar. And overrated. I call, him, I, call, I call him a superstar because the UFC pays him like a superstar. Just got another five-fight deal. So they pay him like a superstar, but he loses every single fight that he's in. Kamaru Usman literally highlight knocked him out the last match. It's one of the biggest knockouts in UFC history. Now, Jorge did have a good one against an older Ben Askren, okay? He had the flying knee knockout that plays in every UFC promo. But name me a, a Jorge Masvidal fight that you walked away saying, wow, that dude is a top five guy in the UFC. You haven't. So he just got worked by Colvin Covington and then punks this man by jumping him outside of a Miami nightclub. And then everybody's mad at Colby Covington for pressing charges. I mean, yeah, like, he did the right thing. Of course you should press charges. If you want to fight, man up, take the mask off, and take your fucking whooping like a, like a man. But apparently, Jorge isn't a man, and he's a little coward. And so he had to sucker punch Colby Covington. So I think there's going to be another rematch. Yeah, I was about to say, do you Colby think... Colby Covington is going to whoop that ass in that rematch i'm telling you because he's gonna be pissed off as hell when they get when they see each other and so is jorge for getting uh price he's gonna get some jail time well he could he could end up 15 15 years by the the damage that he caused because it was a mass uh, apparently it's a if it's a masked offense if you have a mask on while performing a violent crime it like it goes even higher and so here's the deal I'd love to see a rematch I don't know if Jorge is going to be out out of jail <laughs> in order to to get a rematch um, but the the way Colby Covington fights Jorge Masvidal <clears throat> you could line them up ten times out of ten we'll beat him every we'll lose every single time because Colby Covington is going to wrestle you to death he's a he's an all American world-class wrestler and he's just going to hold you to the ground and ground and pound and maintain octagon control all day long so Col- colby covington I-, I i don't see anything wrong with him pressing charges here i mean the ufc community is not getting behind him you know they're saying well you talked all that shit about his family you talked about his kids then he should square up in the streets with you and it's like no you had that opportunity he said all that stuff before you guys squared up in the octagon you had your chance to go out and put colby covington in the ground and you couldn't do it so you decided to sucker punch him you know outside of a nightclub yeah and just like jorge is overrated as hell in just a few minutes we're about to talk about another overrated person in kyrie irving Kind of one and the same. Both cocky pricks. Both suck. Both are overrated. Both are terrible. Like, yo, there are people you can say, oh, look at Kyrie. He's so good at scoring. He's so good. Okay, well, why does he get thrown off of every other team that he's on? Let's be honest, folks. Because he's overrated, just like Corey. Well, here's the deal. Let's Let's segue into the topic that we really want to talk about, and that is... Who has been the biggest disappointment this year? The the Brooklyn Nets or the Los Angeles Lakers? Both had very high expectations going into the season. One was the unanimous favorite by the league. Why, I couldn't tell you because their body of work has not proven anything in the Brooklyn Nets. 
And uh, two, the Los Angeles Lakers, with the greatest player in the world, LeBron James, I mean, still playing like a top three guy in the league. You know, um, I'll, I guess I'll send it to you. Who has been the biggest disappointment for you and why? <clears throat> oh, without a doubt, by far, the Los Angeles Lakers. You think? They, they've got an MVP, and he should be the MVP. It should be LeBron because they should have way more, way more many, or way more wins than they have now. But because of, I, I, God, Westbrook is so bad, so bad. Is he the worst collapsing superstar we've ever seen? Y- yes. Yeah, he's by far the. He is terrible. He's not even. He's not even a good player anymore. He's just bad. Like he's terrible. Westbrook is great for a team that's under 500. He's great when he can when he can be the but only his, superstar there. His numbers there. have never changed, even when he was at OKC to Washington to the Lakers. He's always been this bad. Nobody he's he's not been he's not been a superstar ever. He's always been this bad. People just haven't realized it because he hasn't been on the big stage and hasn't had all these televised games. But he's always been this bad. Well, I don't think I don't even think necessarily that he's always been bad. I think that he's been on a lot of bad teams. I mean, he wasn't no. good for he wasn't good for OKC, especially with that deal. He was the reason that they lost. But like, he's good. Like I said, for a team under five hundred. But he's not good. He's not good. He's for a always, team under five hundred, he's, he's good. He's always had he's always had turnover problems. Yes, that's following him. He's there. Yeah, he's always he's always not been able to shoot the three ball well. Correct. Following him here, he's always been reckless in his in his play. Correct. Okay, and then none of that has changed his whole career from OKC to Washington to the Lakers. Correct. None of that has changed. But he's been the same player. His entire career, it nobody works noticed it. If you're a team under 500, no, no. Yes, it does. It's proven that it's worked because I mean, he took he took the Wizards, he took OKC to the playoffs. Bradley Beal was averaging 30 points a game that year. Okay, was, but still, sure what? is hope. Yeah, sure, and they weren't even that. They barely snuck in the playoffs. So it's not like they were like. It's not like they were like. Oh, we're like one of the top teams. They barely snuck in. They barely snuck in. You cannot win. With Westbrook as your player. And on your team, you can't win. No. Just like DeAndre Jordan, if you play them at all, if you play Westbrook or DeAndre Jordan, you cannot win. Period. Well, you, yeah, cannot, I mean, you cannot win a title with those players on your team. Those, those, they are the two worst players in basketball right this second. Okay. I think now we're getting absolutely but, insane. No, not going by like the, the 12 or 11 people, but like the general people you see. You're yeah. talking about, well, DeAndre Jordan's no longer in the top 30 discussion. Westbrook, I think, would probably still lay in that top 30 discussion. They're not He's even, the worst top 30 They're not sure. even in the top 40 player. Oh, they're probably top DeAndre 40. Jordan's not in the top 60. I wouldn't put him in the top 70 in the NBA. But if, Westbrook's still in the I top wouldn't, 40. I wouldn't have either of those players on any team. If I, if I was any of the teams in the NBA, I would not hire any of those players. Period. Okay. In a story. But like I said, I, I think that if you're a team under 500, if I were the Washington Wizards as of a couple years ago, I mean, if I'm the Orlando Magic, I wouldn't mind paying for a Westbrook to keep us above 500 or right at 500 and sneak into a playoff spot. But at, like you said, they're not going What's far. What's the point? What's the point of having If you've got nothing, at least what Westbrook is going to bring in is jersey sales and ticket sales at least. Nobody wants to see Westbrook play. Nobody. Actually, I think you'd be shocked how many people want to see Westbrook play. Nobody wants to see play. Westbrook play. No one and wants to see Westbrook play for the Los Angeles Lakers. No, nobody wants to see Westbrook play, period. Oh, okay. He's not a good team team leader. He's not a good team uh, team chemistry guy. And, not to mention, he's a little bit of a prick. Yeah, I but lie. I th- that's, why K- that's why Kevin Durant said, I gotta get, I gotta get the hell out of here because I cannot deal with this motherfucker anymore. Yeah, but that's one prick talking to another prick. Kevin Durant is the biggest bitch superstar to ever walk the earth. I agree, but he he recognized, and him and James Harden both recognized, that you can't win if you have Westbrook on your team. Like I said, I'm not, if I'm and bringing why, Westbrook... Why would, why would you pay $40 million a year for uh, okay, on a see, crappy then? team for for nobody? What OKC you, did. Okay, now OKC's regretting everything Washington that they did. did. Washington regretting it. Washington is good now. They're well, they're not good, but how many more? They're te- decent and they're better than they were when they had him. How many more televised games did OKC and Washington have because Westbrook was there? 
It doesn't matter. It does matter. It does Because if matter. you're a team below 500, you need a Westbrook. You need a guy who's going to drive TV sales, who's going to drive ticket sales, who's going to drive jer- jersey sales. Whether he's good or not, or he's going to make you win, which he is not going to make you win. No, we bo- he's not going to. He's not going to drive have, tickers, th- ticket sales. But he is. He's going to have. You're going to have more tele- televised games with Russell Westbrook. True or not true. You're going to be the worst team true on the planet. True or not true. You're going to be the worst team on the planet with West, with West I'm not, Westbrook, I'm not denying that. What I'm saying is... What I'm saying is, why why would you hire him? You're, you're in the business to win. You're not in the business to uh, get ticket sales and all that. You're here to win. That is a, That is the thing. But that's not true. Yes, you're in the business to win, but some of these teams are years away from winning, so why not have the revenue of ticket sales and why not have the, the jersey sales and why not have the TV spots from Russell Westbrook? If I'm What a team, good does that do you? What good does that do you? Brings, it brings money in. It but brings you're fans also paying $40 million a year for a piece of shit player. <laughs> I'm not arguing that Westbrook isn't good. Why would you pay forty million dollars a year? I'm just for saying, a crap player. If I'm a struggling organization Why and I want to drive ticket sales, and, and you want to bring him in your locker room, well, good, good luck with that one. Good okay. luck with that one. All right, well, let's get off Westbrook. I don't think we're ever going to come to any kind of common ground here. All I'm saying, and I would take Kyrie right well, now. Duh. Well, I'm saying with man, it's been and, dropping sixty nah, this I, year. I would take Kyrie not playing. Every home game over Wester Westbrook playing every single game. Every single game. For if me. I'm on a contending team, you're no, absolutely right. No, not even right. if I'm not on a if contending team. If you're on a contending team. team, absolutely right. No, not even I'm, not even if I'm a contending if team. If I'm in the Rockets, fuck. why not? If I'm if because I'm Portland, if I'm Portland and I and I want to get rid of Dame, why not trade and get Russell Westbrook and a bunch of draft? Because capital? nobody wants him. Not even the shitty teams want him because <laughs> he's that bad. Nobody wants him. I think I think we'll find. Okay, I, season. What? Hell no, we don't want him. I think we'll find that Westbrook does have a market. Now it's not going to be a market to a winning franchise. Yeah, he's going to have the free agent market. That's what he's going to have. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, let's go back to the... We, we're completely off topic here. Let's go back to why are the Los Angeles Lakers the biggest disappointment? Westbrook. Literally, West, Westbrook is the reason. And Carmelo, I swear that boy cannot hit a shot on the road. I never seen it before. He can hit everything at home, but once he gets on the road, it's like he loses the ability to shoot a basketball. He also can't play defense. And then AD, I get it. AD's been hurt a lot, but we we just I I need to see a lot more from AD. But the big reason the Lakers are who they are is one person and one person only, and it is all Westbrook's fault because he is terrible. He's not a good leader. And he is by far the worst person I've ever seen play in a long time. I mean, okay. I wouldn't go worst person I've ever seen play because I've seen, I've seen some very bad players play in the NBA as of late. Um, but, I mean, the I, Los would Angeles, p- I would pick Greg Oden over Westbrook. And, and Greg Oden hasn't played in the league in like seven years. So. Okay. And this is where this conversation starts. This is, ladies and gentlemen, Justin is doing drugs. In case you're West curious, Westbrook is terrible. Nobody wants him. Nobody likes him. He should just quit. He should literally quit basketball, <laughs> and, and and just get out of the NBA. He should quit basketball. He should just retire right now and quit. Yeah. Okay. If someone's gonna pay me thirty million dollars a year to play basketball, and someone else tells me to quit, I'm gonna tell that other person to go fuck themselves. Well, you're not gonna be playing basketball for my team. I'm telling you that right now. Westbrook could be hitting the door uh, on his on his way out because. So are the Lakers their, your biggest disappointment because of the championship aspirations? Because no, of what because we were of prom- Westbrook. Because but of what, Westbrook. It, what did, I don't understand. Like Westbrook that's the thing. Is, what were your expectations with Russell Westbrook? I was expecting at least in the at least in the what like the playoffs. Hell, they might not even make playoffs at this point. I was just hoping for. A, I was like expecting a playoffs at least. But Westbrook is that shitty. And so they're not probably not going to make the playoffs because, God, I've never seen a worse player in my life. Well, and here's the deal. He's the people so that, bad. People that want to instantly start blaming LeBron, like all of you Jordan supporters, this is what pisses me off about you, is this man is dropping 38, 50-point games, and he's the only this player to ever drop— This man is doing everything he can He's to the win. only person to ever drop two 50-point games this late in his career, and— 
You're the first person that goes, well, it's LeBron James' fault. He can't elevate a team. He's 37 years old. This isn't 2015, 2016 LeBron James. It should be AD. In Cleveland. AD should be the superstar of the team. Yeah, well, he should, but he can never stay healthy and stay on a court. But that's why they brought in AD to take over being the number one player over LeBron. But at this point. At this point, AD should be the best player in the Lakers team. AD should be a top three guy in the entire NBA. He should be an MVP candidate, but he's not. No. Because he can't stay healthy. He's always hurt. And damn, when he was in there, he wasn't doing much of anything either. He was just a waste of fucking space there. (laughs) He's the same as Westbrook. Terrible. Terrible. Well, I think we know what Justin's thoughts are on uh, the Los Angeles Lakers. My biggest uh, disappointment of the year is definitely the Brooklyn Nets, and here's why. The beginning of the year, I was told that I need to respect the Brooklyn Nets. The beginning of last year, I was told I need to respect the Brooklyn Nets. I need to go ahead and go ahead and just give them the trophy. It's done. It's over with. The Brooklyn Nets have already won it. There's no sense in anyone playing basketball. That's what I was told. I was also told the same thing three years ago, four years ago with the Los Angeles Clippers. Kawhi went there. Championships are over. Absolutely. They don't have to go win it. Just give them the trophy. Here's why the Nets are the biggest disappointment. All of you KD nut riders all of you kd enthusiasts he's the best scorer we've ever seen blah 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 all All of you kd fucks out there yeah well i wasn't gonna call you fucks but justin will okay but all of you people that tell me i just keep it real folks all of you people that tell me that i needed to go ahead and just give the brooklyn nets a championship i need to just go ahead and give kyrie irving and james harden my support i just needed to go ahead and give uh 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 the parade already to brooklyn this is why you're the biggest letdown. This is now the second or third year with this experiment. Second year. Yes. This is now the second year with this experiment. First year, you get bounced in the playoffs. Now to the defending champions. Okay, great. This year, you're sitting in the ninth seed. You just lost to the Hornets. And you might be bounced out of the playoffs or at least into that 10th spot because the Atlanta Hawks are on fire right now. So here's the deal. You apparently have the best player in the world. You apparently have the second best scorer in the world in Kyrie Irving who can now play full home games. Okay, that mandate's been waved away. And you're still barely floating above 500 with a younger roster, a better roster, a younger coach. Some some would say a better coach than the Los Angeles Lakers. I'm not saying that right now. But some would say a better coach than the Los Angeles Lakers. You have the best player out of the Los Angeles Lakers. You have the healthiest roster out of the Los Angeles Lakers. You just got rid of your dead weight in James Harden and got Ben Simmons who now probably won't play uh, until maybe second round of the playoffs. If you even get there, here's the deal. How am I supposed to not say that the Brooklyn Nets are the biggest letdown in the NBA when they're the ones that I've been told I have to give the championship to for two straight years? The same thing I said about the Los Angeles Clippers. I'm done with everybody just go ahead and anointing teams before they've done anything. When LeBron got to Los Angeles, no one said automatic championship. No one said respect the Lakers, and that just shows the LeBron hate that's going out there, let's be honest. But this is 100% the Brooklyn Nets have to be the biggest letdown because they're barely floating above above the 10th spot with, quote-unquote, the best player in the world with a younger and much better roster than the Los Angeles Lakers. Plus they got ran off the fucking floor last night by the Hornets. I mean... They did get run off the floor, absolutely. I don't know fucking had to describe the floor, but they did get run off the floor by LaMelo Ball and the Hornets, okay? Um, but like that game aside, we shouldn't be talking about the Brooklyn Nets in the ninth seed. It should be the Brooklyn Nets in the one or the two seed. This is, we shouldn't be talking about the Brooklyn Nets at all. They suck just like the Lakers. And they have no shot at winning the title. Well, this, that's why we, we brought up the subject. And I can't wait to reveal who I have as my final picks because I have already my final picks for this year. For the NBA championship? Yes, sir. All right, well, we'll close this section off here in just a second with that. Um But without a doubt, the Los Angeles Lakers absolutely are a massive letdown. Anytime you have LeBron James on your team, expectations is a championship. Problem is, LeBron James is 37. He cannot drag this team to a championship, and the Russell Westbrook experiment did not pan out. Russell Westbrook has been the worst performing superstar I've ever seen in NBA history. But for me, I edge them out by the Brooklyn Nets for the simple fact that I've been told to go ahead and give them the trophy for two straight years, and they have been bounced out of the playoffs, and this year they barely are even going to make the playoffs most likely going to make the play-in game and I don't know that I trust Brooklyn in even a one-on-one game because they play different every single game all right now let's talk about um 
our top three favorites for NBA championships this year. Uh, my number one, uh, the the Bucks. Here's the deal. I you know my rules on this show. If you win the championship until you're dethroned, you're my favorite to win the championship again. That's how I roll. That's how I will always roll. I'm not going to not give you your respect. Giannis just put up 40 and 50 points in the playoffs. Giannis is playing the best basketball in the NBA. He's the best player in the NBA. I'm not taking that away from him. That's my number one contender for the NBA championship. Who's your number one? My number one is going to be the Milwaukee Bucks as well. I mean, what can you say? Giannis is having another fantastic year. They basically have the same team back, but adding Grayson Allen. Um, so they're they're the best team in the NBA right now, and so uh, they're my number one team. They're the most complete roster, and I think Grayson Allen's actually a very nice addition. He's a D, D and three guy. Um, he's younger. He's quick. You know, he's going to be that brute guy. He's going to be that Draymond Green, so to speak, in the playoffs where he can go out there, get a couple hard fouls, hit a couple threes, get under people's skin. Um, But they have the most complete roster besides my second favorite, which is the Phoenix Suns. Um, The Phoenix Suns, what can I say, without Chris Paul, Devin Booker's performing like a top five guy in the NBA. Uh, I mean, uh, I'm trying to think of their, their big man. Um, I don't know why Brooke I'm blanking Lopez, out. No. Bobby Portis. No. Um, talking about the Suns. DeAndre Ayton. DeAndre Ayton. Good grief. I don't know why. I wanted to say DeAndre Drummond, but I knew it was DeAndre. I don't know why I was thinking Drummond. Um, but DeAndre Ayton's playing like the like a top five big man in the NBA. They have an, a complete roster. They've got a point guard uh, in Chris Paul when he comes back healthy. That is the best facilitator in the NBA right behind LeBron James. I love the way this roster is completed. I love the way Devin Booker stepped up. The Phoenix Suns are my second favorite to win the title. My second favorite, um, I'm staying in the West. Interesting. But I'm going with a different team. Uh, very Interesting. I'm going with the Dallas Mavericks. As your second favorite? As my second favorites to win the, the whole thing. Luka's having an MVP year, um, and they've gotten way better um, since they shipped Porzingis' ass out of there. So now Luka is free to do what he wants, and the dude has been balling. Their team has been good uh, with the additions to Spencer Dinwiddie. Spencer and, Dinwiddie is a massive And Bertanis. And uh, so they are rocking it. And Luka is the best player in all of basketball besides Giannis. It goes Giannis, Luka, then it goes LeBron, KD's fourth. I mean, I, I'm actually not mad at that player ranking. I think Luka Doncic is one of the most underrated players he in the NBA. He gets overlooked a lot. He really does. He's, get, I, he's getting overlooked this year in the MVP race, and he should be in the conversation, but he's not even in. Yeah, I mean, the fact that we have DeMar DeRozan as a top-five candidate for the MVP race and we don't have Luka Doncic does blow my mind. Um, I'm not mad at the Dallas Mavericks. They are going to be a very tough out. I'm also going to stay in the West here for my third and final. Them good old Memphis Grizzlies. They are 15-2 and two without John Morant, whenever John Morant's been healthy. With John Morant, we all know how explosive and how incredible they are. They are a bunch of young, dynamic players that don't know that they shouldn't be winning at this high of a level this early. And that's the best thing. When you can be a team that doesn't know that you shouldn't be where you're at, when you're a team that's just unconscious, that's just playing great basketball, that thinks you can beat anybody, guess what? You can beat anybody. If you believe you can beat anybody and you play with that passion, you know, that's the, those are the, the, the young 16-year-old kids at the YMCA that go in and they beat the, the college kids or they beat the team with the, you know, with, with, the, uh, with the years on them, beat the older guys that know how to play dynamic basketball. It's the 16-year-olds that come in there and win. Why? Because they believe they can win. And that's what the Memphis Grizzlies are. They're a bunch of kids that believe that they can win an NBA championship, and I'm not putting it past them to win an NBA championship. I'm not. I think they're going to be one of the toughest outs, if not the toughest out in all of basketball. I do. I think I, I'd pick them over the Boston Celtics, over the Miami Heat. They are the toughest out, especially in that second round. So that will round out my third and final uh, NBA championship odds so far. That is a great pick, and uh, yeah, they are they are fantastic. All right, so for my number three, I'm going to shock a lot of people. Oh my gosh, what dumb shit are you about to say? I'm going in the East. Oh, jeez. Um, let, let me, can I guess? You can guess. Okay. 
So it's got to be – you can't go anywhere else, but the Miami Heat, the Boston Celtics, or the Brooklyn Nets would be the only ones that I could even kind of guess. I'm going to say – I'm going to say the Boston Celtics. Ding, ding, ding. You are Woo! correct. Okay, I can respect that The Boston that Celtics are my number three favorite team to win. Uh, let's, I mean, let's just say, you know, everybody thought Brad Stevens going up to be uh, the general manager was going to be a train wreck. And not only did it turn out to be great, but then signing uh, Tatum and Brown and Smart back together again, people thought that they should break them up. They've proven that they can work together. And they're twenty two and three since the All Star break. Jason wow. Tatum is averaging thirty four points a game yeah. since the All Star break. And so they have to be they have to be up there and they're in my consideration for uh top three favorites. Yeah, that's a that's actually not a bad pick. I don't mind the Boston Celtics. And we thought earlier in the year when Brad Stevens went up to be a GM when Mar- uh, when Marcus Smart said basically he doesn't want to play with Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum because they're a bunch of ball hogs. Everybody thought, okay, well, well, Smart's out of there and they're going to try and blow up some of these pieces because you know of, of the fight that they had. But they rallied around that and they have just balled out. They really have. They're now the number one seed in the East. And the problem is, is that would be Brooklyn right now. That's their first draw. That that's they, they, will, I, they Brooklyn. I'm telling you this right now. Brooklyn cannot beat them. I don't think so in either. A seven game series. Period. Oh, cannot. That, and the problem is they're going to have to play in. They might have to match up with Boston before they can even get into a seven game series with somebody. They might have to play Boston in a one off game. And Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, I, I I would choose their dynamic too over over KD. And Kyrie Irving, for the simple fact that Kyrie Irving can't guard anybody. Jason Tatum can get buckets just as much as KD. And I like Jalen Brown more than I like Kyrie Irving right now. Why? Jalen Brown's at least been playing this year. And you can put Marcus Smart on uh, Kyrie Irving. We know Ben the Bum's probably not going to make a showing, at least for another three months, maybe even sit it down the rest of the year. I I like that Boston Celtics picked him more and more. You've got me on it. But there it is. Those are our three finalists for our NBA championship odds right now. All right, let's finish up with, uh, let's talk a little bit March Madness. Now, we've made some predictions on this show. We've talked about our brackets, and I've thrown my bracket away. I don't know where it is. I don't haven't looked at it, haven't even thought about it. After Gonzaga and Arizona both went down, you know, I walked away. But Justin has been on Duke from the beginning of this, and a lot of the years he's on Duke. I know Duke has absolutely no shot, but this year Justin might have actually nailed it right on the head. And what a storybook slash movie ending are we going to have here? UNC versus Duke, Kansas makes it all the way through, and I mean, I, I just don't see that matchup going anywhere but a Kansas domination victory over UNC. Or not, excuse me, not a UNC. Um, who's Kansas play? Why am I blanking out? You know what? Now I'm blanking out too. I know. Goodness gracious. Um, I don't know why I'm blanking out. Uh, we'll, we'll figure it out here in a second. But we've got a Duke-UNC match. Are you looking it up for me? Yes, I'm looking it up right, right now. So yeah, so we've got a Duke-UNC match that... I mean, it, uh, Villanova, duh. Kansas versus Villanova, Duke versus UNC. So let's talk about the Kansas-Villanova matchup. Villanova just lost arguably one of their best players, or if not their best player, one of their top players, um, to looks like probably an ACL. I think Kansas right now is clicking on all cylinders. I've got Kansas in a massive win against Villanova, although I think Villanova is a much better coached team. Kansas has been playing the best ball since this whole thing started, so I, I'm going to put Kansas in my championship. I don't think that's really an interesting matchup to me. The interesting matchup is Duke versus UNC. Coach K's final year, he gets to take on his rival, the biggest rival. It might be one of the largest rivals, in, or one of the... Uh, Biggest rivals in all of sports history, including professional sports, and UNC versus Duke. Uh, Duke is playing at a supreme level. They got four guys that are for sure going to go into the league. And for Coach K to be able to match up against the biggest, his biggest rival in his final year in order to get to a championship, I like Duke's odds here. I think this is going to be one of the best games we've seen. UNC is playing with a lot of confidence. That, that white boy is a bad dude. He is just a bad, bad dude. And 
uh, the biggest thing is, can Roach impact the game like he has every single round? Roach, for me, has been the deciding factor. His penetration, being able to get guys open, being able to attack the defenses early and get them in foul trouble, has been superb for Duke, and the insertion of him into the starting lineup was really a brilliant move by Coach K. So I'm going to say Duke over UNC, Duke versus Kansas, and then, uh, of course, we'll do a championship breakdown uh, w- when all these games play out. But I think that's going to be your championship match, Kansas versus Duke. Justin, what are your thoughts on just this this final run for Coach K, the fact that UNC versus Duke is happening in a Final Four, first time they've ever met in a, uh, in a, in a March Madness tournament, and then Kansas versus Villanova, do you see anything more than I do besides a Kansas ass whooping? Um, I mean, Duke, I believe, is going to be North Carolina. Um, I picked Duke. I've been on them from since day one, like you said. Uh, they just got too much fire, firepower. The they, UNC cannot match up with them. And, uh, yeah, they're, I definitely think it's a mismatched game. And I think Duke's going to... Uh, going to beat them pretty handily now with Kansas to Villanova I'm going to take Kansas just for the sole fact I got more athletes um and I think that they can uh I think that they can um progress better or they can you know shoot the ball a little bit better than Villanova can okay but what were your thoughts like I said what were your thoughts on you know Coach K getting a match up against UNC in his final Final year, like I, I want you to talk about that because you you've been a Duke fan ever since I was uh, ever since we were kids. So like, tell me about that. I mean, yeah, it's a it's a great it's a great rivalry. Um, you know, they've had you know Coach K means I don't think Co- it really matters for Coach K to win a championship. That's all he cares about. That's all he's looking forward to. He doesn't care if it's UNC, Villanova, Kansas. He could give two shits who the who the hell it is. He's only focused on one thing and one thing only, and that's winning the national championship with these guys here at Duke this year. Um, and I think they're gonna get it done. But yeah, the rivalry is cool and all, but he doesn't care. He doesn't give two craps about North Carolina. Yeah, but don't you think that this will when they eventually make a movie about Coach K? Don't you think that this will make such a cool storybook ending? It's like he gets to play his rival to finish it out. And hopefully he wins and wins the championship. That'd be, uh, j- it, it'd just be so cool to see this all. Well, I think come. winning the championship would mean a lot to him. I don't think he gives two shits about playing North Carolina. Like, you know, I don't think it. I don't think it literally matters to him whatsoever that he's played North Carolina. All right. Well, you know, Justin doesn't want to care about my movie pitch. It's cool. I'll go fuck myself. But there it is. There is a. Uh, the Locker Room episode in the books. Once again, everybody, I want to thank you all for listening. If you like us, support us on social media, TLR Podcast 615. That's TLR Podcast 615. Once again, everybody, I'm Jacob Courtright. I'm Justin Corey. And this is The Locker Room.